This presentation is on the example database that we're going to use to learn SQL, more specifically, MySQL. What you're looking at here is a database diagram that shows four tables that are part of what I'm calling the book pub database, and that's a book publishing database. The idea is we're a publishing holding company, and we have a table which holds publishers, and the publisher publishes books, and those books have authors. No surprise there. There's a middle table here that I'll talk to you about in just a second. Let's start with the easiest thing, the publishers. Each publisher has a publisher ID. That's just a numeric code to identify them, make sure that they're unique from any other publisher. They have a name, like New Age Books or Bennett and Hartley, and an address, city and state. Now, a book is identified by its ISBN number. It has a book title, a type, you know, like cooking, programming, computer book, something to that effect. Now, this is interesting. I have pub ID here. That's the same column and kind of data as what's in the publisher's table. There's a word for a column like this. It's called a foreign key. A foreign key is any column or a combination of columns that refers back to the value of a primary key in another table. And it's the magic that holds these tables together. It's the connecting column. So it allows us to have what they call a one to many relationships. Notice this little thing here? We affectionately call that a crow's foot. And it means that we can have zero, one, or many books per publisher. But a book isn't going to have more than one publisher, just going to have one. Look at some of the other data, the price of the book. This is the advance that was paid to the author or authors for writing the book. The year-to-date sales field represents the number of books that have been sold, so it's just an integer. The publishing date is pub date, when the book was published. No surprise there. Let's go over here to the author table. Authors are going to be identified by their social security number. The last name, first name, phone, and address information as well. Now, this table in the middle is a special thing. Whenever you have two tables, two things, they're often called entities, conceptually, when you have a book and an author that have a many-to-many -many relationship between each other, then you have to do something special. Let's talk about many-to-many. -many. An author can write more than one book. There's no rule that says you have to write one book and then retire. You can write a second book. So we can have an author write many books. A book can be written by more than one person, more than one author. You can have two, three, four, whatever. So the relationship between these two entities or two tables is called many-to-many, -many, meaning more than one is possible on either side of the equation. So, unfortunately, we can't build tables to behave that way using this foreign key technique. What we have to do is we have to have two one-to-many relationships between a table here that bridges the two other tables. This is sometimes called a bridging entity, sometimes an association table, sometimes a connecting table. There's various words that describe why this table exists. And what it has is a social security number and an ISBN for a book together as its primary key, the thing that makes each row unique. Now, I'm going to show you some data here in a minute, but one of the really cool things about this, all you need as a minimum is these two primary keys from the two associated tables coming together here. But once you have this table to get this to work out, you can discover attributes that are only true about this relationship. For example, author order. This is the position an author appears on a book. For example, if I wrote a book with Bill Gates, he'll appear on the book as number one, and I'll be number two, probably in a very small type. But if I write a book by myself, I'm not going to be number two, I'm going to be number one. So author order is not a property of the author. It's a property of this relationship of the two authors on a single book. One other column that we see on this table is something called royalty share. This is the percentage each author gets from the book. Again, if I write a book with Bill Gates, he's going to get 99% or more, and I'm going to get 1%. However, 
If I write my own book, I'm going to get 100% of the royalty share. So there are attributes about a relationship. Let's go look at some data. Maybe by example, this will make this a little clearer. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to go to our WAMP server, click on that, and I'm going to open PHP MyAdmin, the tool that I've shown you before. Now, I've already predefined some tables. There are databases that come with. I clicked on the test to get the test database, and I have those four tables that I just described to you. They've already been defined. In fact, if I click on the author table, you'll see that there's data here for the authors, the social, last name, first name, etc. Same with book, the ISBN, and the titles of the book, what kind of book they are, etc. Let's look at that book author table. Now, it's not necessarily immediately clear what the relationships are. Let me put the social security number in order. I'm going to click on that. Now, we can see on this first book, we just have one author wrote this book. But down here, I've got this author, and I've got him here twice. He wrote this book, and he was author number two on that book. And he wrote this book, and he was author number one. And you can see the royalty share is different. Let me sort the ISBN number. You can see at the top here, I have a book that's on two rows and two different authors on it, author one and author two, and the different royalty share. So that's how you model this many-to-many -many relationship by using this association table that's in between the two associated tables, the authors and books. That ends the presentation on the example database we're going to use to learn MySQL.